Yes, I want now to change the subject entirely really to the trials now um, of badger culling. Now, the R RBCT 10-year trial of badger culling found that killing too, too few badgers over too long a period of time caused TB infections to rise. Is there now a real risk of this happening um, in the coal zones? What is your estimate of what's happening? Well, I just think we should step back and look at the whole picture. The last 10 years, this country spent half a billion pounds sending 305,000 otherwise perfectly healthy cattle to slaughter because the policy until then, and almost unique in this country, was only to bear down on disease in one host, which was cattle. Every other sane country has borne on, down on disease in cattle but has also borne up down on disease in wildlife. So when I was in opposition, I, a long time ago, to, I went to Michigan and saw what they did with the white-tailed deer. Everything we were doing here, very tight cattle movement controls, uh, some work on biosecurity, which was more effective on deer, uh, testing and rigorous slaughter of reactors, but a very vigorous campaign on the white-tailed deer which was very contentious in Michigan because the, the shooting or the hunting of, of white-tailed deer is more valuable than the dairy industry. Uh, I've been in touch with Australia and I went down there this year. They had a 22-year campaign, which is absolutely astonishing, removing TB from cattle. They were about to lose their export status to Germany and America, and they had a huge problem in domesticated cattle, in feral cattle, and also in water buffalo. And you, you have to really, really admire what the Americans and what the Australians did. And after 22 years, they were TB free. If you look at uh, New Zealand, exactly the same as us, TB testing, slaughter reactors, cattle movement controls, but a very vigorous campaign on the host there, which is the brush tail possum, where they've taken the population down from 50 million to 30 million. And they're still at it, and they're on the way to TB free status. And then nearer home, because everyone says all, all these examples are irrelevant, if you look at nearer home, the Republic of Ireland, they had a very steady, accelerating progress of. TB in cattle, which has been arrested by a new policy of removing diseased badgers about a kilometre round every uh, reactor case where more than three cattle were removed, removed as reactors. And they have seen cases go down from about 40,000 a year to 18 and a half last year and a further 20% this year. And as someone who had, had pet badgers as a child and wants to see healthy badgers, I'm happy to say the average Irish badger is one kilogram heavier. So all we are doing on these two pilots is to establish whether controlled shooting by skilled marksmen is a safe, humane, and effective method of removing diseased wildlife. That's all these pilots are about. So I think we shouldn't get uh, the importance of them out of kilter. This is very early days when you go back and you look at what those other countries have done. So we're not going to be knocked off course on this. Sadly, a badger vaccine does not work on diseased animals. Sadly, we don't have a cattle vaccine. We are well ahead of the field in the rest of Europe. You've seen my letter from Commissioner Borge. That's a 10-year program. So what we're doing under current circumstances is acknowledging that the previous policy of attempting to remove this bacterium, and that's what it is, by only bearing down on cattle, failed. And this year, up to July, a further 20,000 cattle have been slaughtered, otherwise completely healthy. And that is a very, very stupid way to try to run the cattle industry. And ultimately, we won't have a cattle industry. So where are we up to? Uh, these two pilots we've got going. Um, I'd really pay tribute to those who've been involved, because they were locally organized. And I think we can say as pr this will all be adjudicated by the independent panel. So my opinions. Um, our second, actually, to the panel. We'll see what they say. But it, it seems to me that after the first few weeks in Somerset and Gloucestershire that uh, I pay tribute to those involved. These trials have proved to be safe. All the reports coming to back to me is they're humane. We've got a yeah. lot to get through. So yeah. I okay. think if we could just keep the answers. Just, um, I've already yeah. got colleagues wanting That's to come right. in on the back yeah. of this. So I'm going to let Mr Parrish finish. Just, just a couple of... I mean, you, you talk about the, the Secretary State, the coal zones. I mean, what is your estimation of, of why the population in the coal zones seems to have dropped so remarkably? I mean, other areas such as Worcester Park, no such drop has been detected. So what, what's been different about the coal, coal zone areas? 
Well, I haven't seen numbers. verified figures on Woodchester Park yet, mm. so this has been bandied yeah. around. Uh, we generally don't know. There's about a thousand fewer than, according to the count last year. We, this was done by very professional people using the same techniques. Um, but as I've said publicly, these are wild animals, subject to the vagaries of the weather, um, food availability, um, and their and breeding habits. So, and disease. We we generally don't know. And just final final question on this one. What assessment have you made of the risk of spreading uh, TB outside the coal area um, if the target numbers are, are not met? Well, I think the chief vet has made that clear in his statement that ideally we should get to 70%. Mm. But I think it's worth pointing out that in, the, in three of the RBCT uh, trial areas, um, one hit 32, the other 35, and the other 39 at the lowest. And they did contribute to disease reduction at the end of the period. This is a four-year program. We're not going to drop our spades and run away home just after the first few weeks. And you I mean, it's quite clear we need to pursue this. Yeah. It is quite clear it would have been better if we'd got 70. But we're learning. These are pilots. We are learning an awful lot from this. What is not an option... It is absolutely not an option, is to run away from the bacterium and pretend that the policy of the previous years, by only concentrating on cattle, which has led to this hideous slaughter, will end in anything but disaster. It will end with this country not having a cattle industry. Okay. Thank you very um, much. Just on this point, uh, Emma Lawbuck yeah, and then Amy McKenzie. Uh, Secretary of State, I am um, just following on from Neil's comments with regards to the badger calls. Um, as you're well aware, the guidance that was issued from DEFRA to National England in respect of these calls repeatedly and specifically stated that the calls must be carried out in six weeks and must call 70% of the badger population. I think you've already touched on the fact that that hasn't happened and that's failed. I'm curious, in terms of the extensions that are happening in Somerset and Gloucestershire, who is exactly paying for that and will DEFRA be making a contribution? Yeah, the payments will carry on exactly under the arrangements agreed for the six weeks. But I think you've missed the point that up to the end of July, a further 20,000 completely healthy cattle have been hauled off to slaughter. These are pilots to establish whether this method is safe, humane and effective. And we are learning a lot from the pilots already. This is a, we have set a target to make uh, England uh, TB free in 25 years' time. The Australians did it in 22 years, and these are the very, very early days. These are two trial pilots looking to see how we remove disease wildlife. We've got a lot of work going on on badger vaccines, a huge amount of work going on on cattle vaccines, and we're looking at other controls. But you've just got to keep your eye on the bigger picture. It is not an option to carry on, as the last government did, only addressing this bacterium in wildlife, we are in, in cattle. We are unique of all the industries, all the, all the countries with a, with a serious cattle industry in only addressing disease in cattle. No one else has done it. So all due respect, Secretary of State, the, the criteria that was set out initially has failed, yet you've sanctioned extension of these calls at the risk of spreading TB. The Chief Veterinary Officer has revealed in leaked documents reported to the press has been given the green light to ignore the scientific criteria for these and any future calls. Don't you think this has damaged the credibility of all involved and perhaps in some way the public has been misled? No, I'm not sure you listened to my earlier uh, statement. In the RBCT, three of those only achieved 32, 35 and 39. This is a four-year programme. These are pilots to establish whether this method is safe, humane and effective. In the background, this disease is rampaging on and healthy cattle are being slaughtered. And our cattle industry is destined to be destroyed. And that is the big picture you've got to look at. So it would have been much better, I couldn't agree more, if more had been taken earlier. And it would have been ideal if they had got 70% within the six weeks. But you've got to look at what happened under the RBCT when some areas they got off to a slower start. But at the end of the RBCT, and we hope to improve on a lot of the conditions set by this, with bigger areas, harder boundaries and all that, uh, we will get a reduction in disease. And I would ask you to look at the other countries I've mentioned. 
There is no other country in the world that has attempted to get rid of this disease without addressing the disease in wildlife. Ian McKenzie. Thanks, Chair. Secretary of State, would you agree that the public look upon the evaluation of this um, process of eliminating TB with the badger cull is more of a focus on the actual effectiveness of the slaughter rather than the safe and humane method? And you have already indicated that it took Australia 22 years. Uh, are we going to see that length of time of slaughter of badgers to, to reach that TB free? Well, I have set a target of 25 years, and I have been criticised by some for saying it is too short and others by saying it is too long. I think it is realistic, because I have taken the progress made in the countries I have cited. Um, I think that the polling we had, the NFU had quite an interesting poll in June, which showed that uh, a bit less than a third supported what we were doing, uh, more than a third were vigorously opposed, and a further third were neutral. I, they didn't know, they weren't interested, or had no strong opinion. And um, but that would still be the majority or not? No, I think, no, but, no but I think I think there is a sort of balance out there, and. There is very little understanding. You know, that a year ago, I was much criticised for not deploying uh, vaccination. There was a sort of binary choice presented to the public by those who opposed the cull, saying we could have vaccinated. Sadly, we do not have a cattle vaccine. Obviously, we vaccinate for all sorts of other diseases. It would be ideal if we had one, and we would deploy it. We, we, the, the badger vaccine, sadly, will not work on diseased animals. So. Uh, the, uh, the idea that I was just being pig-headed, I was going purely for culling when there was a vac vac vaccination option, was incorrect. So I think what we have done in the, in the succeeding months, I think we've got that message across, that there is sadly no valid vaccine that will work, and that we have to follow the methods used in every other serious country with a problem of bovine tuberculosis in cattle and a problem, problem of bovine tuberculosis in wildlife. Okay. Uh, Sean Murray. Very quickly, Secretary of State. If we didn't take action, we know that there is an increasing um, number of cases of this disease in domestic animals like domestic cats. If we didn't take this action, would we see this increasing, do you think? Uh, well, I wouldn't want to be alarmist, but obviously if this disease got out of hand, um, there is a risk of it getting into other hosts. Uh, the Germans have a problem in deer. The French have a problem in deer. And can I ask, has, has there been an increase in cases in domestically kept pets? I've seen reports of a small number. I couldn't give you the exact number. Perhaps we can get back to you on that. Thank Perhaps you Perhaps that's something much. for the Department of Health. But we, but we should respect the fact, you know, yes. this is a zoonosis. And uh, before... Uh, pasteurisation before the war, you know, killed Absolutely. two and a half, three thousand people a year. So this is a serious disease which we have to treat Thank uh, you with real respect. Richard, right. The numbers are not as high as you wanted, Secretary of State, and you're learning from the pilots. What are you learning? What, what is there to learn? Why are the numbers so low? What are the, well, what's going most, wrong, well, if that's the right way of well, phrasing it? Let's, let's wait until we get the evaluation by the independent panel. But well, the most obvious thing is that six weeks is not long enough. I think that was just an arbitrary time so period. So it was a slightly overambitious target, perhaps? Yeah, I think, well, these were all the details, of course, that were all set up uh, before I arrived at Secretary of State last year. And I've just taken on what had gone through a rigorous uh, <laughs> administrative and legal process. Uh, but it's, it's obvious, I think, the first one is that six weeks is not long enough. But there will be other lessons we will learn uh, when we come to get the evaluation from the independent panel. Thank you. Just on a general point, Secretary of State, when, when a species is given protected state, uh, status, um, does the department review this policy? Um, apparently, pine martens are eradicating capercaillie in Scotland. Um, do we have a policy of reviewing within the department wildlife which is given protective status after a period of years? Are you likely to? Well, we are looking at the whole of wildlife law. We have the Commission look at that. Um, but we have no plans at all to change, uh, certainly not in the foreseeable future, change the current arrangements. But I think, I think it is worth pointing out that the Protection Badgers Act was set up to stop the disgusting practice of uh, badger baiting, which is really horrible. Um, 
Well, I don't think, I, at the time, I don't think it was ever intended that it should have been a, a blanket protection. Section 10.2a was always allowed you to take issue licenses to, to remove badges for the purpose of prevention of disease. And I think um, it's, the, the act has, has been abused. And of course, if measures have been taken to stop the spread in the wildlife population, we wouldn't be in the mess we are now. Thank you. Uh, Emma, your part on. Uh